Lovely. <sighs> Great. So I know people will keep uh, joining in, but we can start off. Um, I love that people keep time. We love to do that as well. We do not want to keep you guys uh, for long. And we've got really exciting um, things to share with you today about marketing. So, and if you stay to the end, we're going to send you, we're going to show you the kind of resources that we're sending to you for free that you can use for yourselves um, um, throughout the year, actually. So that should be good. Um, awesome. So let's start with a bit of an introduction. My name is Rima, if you don't know. Um, I am the founder and CEO of RD Marketing. And I really welcome you guys. Um, it's, it's, I will say Happy New Year, definitely, the way Eunice said it. Happy New Year. This is going to be a much uh, amazing year, I think, even through and despite all of these issues. Um, so anyway, RD Marketing, what we do is we help with uh, marketing for different organizations. Uh, we help, and some of the things that we help with is reputation marketing, video marketing. If you need to have a campaign on um, events like these online and offline. So there's various different kinds of things that we do. And we help also with strategies and, and market audit. Um, when you're coming up with uh, a new product or um, you want to get, you know, sort of uh, get to your target market. We are the ones who really like, we love to help um, different kinds of organizations, whether it's a startup or an SME um, or a manufacturer, you know, we're there to help. So that's a little bit about um, about us, Yunus. Hi, and again, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Yunus Nyandat, and I am with M uh, MBM Africa, which owns my biz marketer. And my biz marketer works with predominantly startups, but we also work with SMEs. Now we provide go-to-market strategies, but all the way to a full-fledged uh, marketing uh, services for SMEs, which means that we do uh, digital marketing all the way to uh, digital advertising. So when you're looking to connect to your customers, we are the people to come see. Now to get things rolling, uh, I will hand off to uh, Rima to get us started and welcome. Fantastic, excellent. So, I mean, to start off with, first of all, I wanted to find out from, um, from everybody. Um, I'll do a quick poll just to get an idea of where we're at. Um, have you ever done a marketing plan before? If you can just, you know, spend maybe like a minute, just, you know, have you tried it before? Have you not? Um, try and make, maybe like you've done it with somebody, but you've never done it on your own, you know, or have a, a general idea of it, you know, it just gives us an idea of where you're at um, while we're going on with, uh, with a webinar. Great, great, great. Excellent. Thank you. So this is good. I'm just going to close the poll. Uh, we've got, okay, we've got a few people who've done it before and a lot of people who've tried it, which is great. You know, trying means that you've actually put yourself into the position. That's amazing. And if you've mm -hmm. never done it before, this is the right place for you. And if you've done it before, you'll probably get some tips and tricks um, right now or today um, to help you move forward or propel you forward in your business and your work or wherever you work. It doesn't matter. It, it's not necessarily for somebody who is in business. You could be working somewhere else and, you know, you, you give some uh, gems for your people as well. Okay. So great. That's amazing. Uh, all right. So we're going to move into, uh, First one, yeah, there you go. So before we do anything else, I want, to, I want you to tell you a little bit about what business growth means. A lot of people feel like business growth is um, getting new customers um, and it is, you know, you're, you're growing, you have to get new customers. However, it also involves retaining your existing customers. So when you are planning for the year, always please put that into mind um, on how you're going to keep your relationships or grow your relationship with your existing customers and retaining them is really important. Um, other things you can think about when you're growing your business is upselling to existing customers. For example, a really uh, interesting idea is when you go to buy pizza, 
the person at the at the um, counter will ask you, would you like a Coke with that or a soda? Would you like some uh, extra cheese on it? You know, so that's kind of their way of upselling. You can do the same thing with your business as well. Think about how you can upsell or sell some something more to your existing customers. It also includes improving your processes in your business. The way you do certain things, if you get customer feedback, and it's important to actually do that, you understand the experience that your customer is going through to maybe get to you um, or, or run your processes or um, use your services, for example. So um, this, that's fine. Um, so this will probably help you to uh, improve your processes as you go along. And it's fine to, to sort of do that. Um, keeping an open feedback loop is really important. Proactively get feedback from your clients, and this will help you in overall process as well. Um, always link back to your vision and values. Um, anything that you do as your projects or um, as your activities, you've got to come back to what's your vision, what are your values? And if you're making an impact to your community, Remember, your community is who are buying from you. So are you making an impact back to your community as well? What are you standing for, right? Those are important things when you're thinking about marketing as well and for your business. One of the biggest things is a mind shift. Um, in mind shift, I mean growth mindset, right? We've got this whole, like, when COVID hit, everyone's like, oh, you know what? No one's buying, no one's buying. But think about it yourself. Aren't you going to a supermarket and buying something? right? Aren't you going somewhere and actually purchasing something? There are people out there, they're still wanting to like do up their house, for example. And they're taking this advantage where, you know, it's a downtime to actually do it. So if you shift your mindset, that would help you to grow your business as well, right? And then finally, get help, whether it's professional help or partnerships. Partnerships are amazing in terms of growing your business. Don't sometimes think about your competitor as just that. You could put hands together and you can have each other's uh, positive uh, strengths, qualities to start building and growing together as well. So think about that when you're thinking um, business growth. Yunus? Yeah, right. Oh, slides are not moving along as they should. There we go. So, what's in a business plan? Or what's in a uh, sorry? What's in a marketing plan? It's that written document that you write what your marketing efforts are going to be. You're figuring out what your marketing situation is, right? And writing it down. And then you discuss with your team if you have one or you're, you know, you're sitting down with yourself and discussing what the market looks like and identifying what your challenges are, figuring out what you're going to do to, to, uh, to get to that target market. The description of your marketing mix, where you're going to find these customers, what you're going to do about it, and how you're going to allocate whatever budget you have towards this, your marketing goals. And of course, with these discussions is you're deciding, this is how much I want to grow. This is how many customers I want to get, right? So you absolutely have to have those goals. So uh, defining those goals also helps you get to that success. It's how you would understand if you are actually successful, right? So, Connecting that, the benefits of those, uh, the marketing plan is helping you connect all the dots together, right? So you made a decision this year, I'm going to grow my business, right? So now you're here saying, what do I do to create this marketing plan? And you're going, you're making marketing decisions. This one step here that you've, you've made to attend this webinar is a decision. A decision to do, I wanna do this right, right? So now you're going, you're make, you've made a one decision deciding on what I've done in the past, has some of it has worked and some of it hasn't worked. What you want to look at is what worked and what didn't work. And what, what, what is it that, that didn't work that you need to trick or to let go completely? And if it can work, tweak it and improve it and make it, and make it work. For example, maybe you did a campaign on Facebook and 
you did not target the right audience. The campaign didn't work and you're like, oh, this Facebook doesn't work. Facebook does work, it's your campaign that didn't work. So you need to tweak that campaign to suit the target audience you're going after to make it work, right? Set your goals on your Facebook campaign that says, okay, I need to reach a certain audience. Um, that is, if I'm selling, use, uh, you, I'm selling quotes uh, from uh, Kikomba that I've bought Mutush and I've got these quotes, I'm selling to women that are in middle-class women, uh, so I'm going to go onto Facebook. I'm going to make sure that I'm looking for professional women, uh, certain income bracket in living in certain areas. So now your Facebook tells you, oh, your this your target audience you're looking at is about 30,000, right? So your goal now is to reach that 30,000. It tells you then your budget is about $20 or $30. Then you look for the $20, $30 you need to spend to reach that audience and then see what the results are, then rinse and repeat and improve. So plan, it's a, now this is where you understand that you made a decision to, 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 to reach uh, these women, you made a decision to target them on Facebook, you set a goal to reach 30,000 people, uh, 30,000 uh, folks, and then now you've made the plans, you've created the artwork, you've created the ad, you've used the right words and executed and then use the right strategies. How many times do I go on then and engage with them? So keep doing this. So the, that planning and execution is what makes the, the what improves and makes the benefits of your marketing plan work. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through like seven steps um, to do your marketing plan um, so that this will help you out. So we'll go into the executive summary, we'll do position analysis, what your ideal target market is, um, analyze competitors, set goals, set a budget, and then performance and implementation. So we've got to have some sort of uh, measurements in place. And so that's uh, right at the end of it, right? Okay, so to start off with, we have the executive summary. So what happens in an executive summary? What are you gonna do right in the, right in the start? The first thing you wanna start is like what, what works, right? In a marketing plan, Remember the things that uh, Eunice told you already about when you had done your analysis from the previous year, what are the things that worked for you? All right. So you put that together and say, okay, this is definitely that works. So a, pl a plan that works, you have to make it like understand the purpose of it. So now you're saying, okay, fine. You know what? Last year we were uh, focused on these items, one, two, three, ABC, whatever that was. But then now I want to do this. This is my objective. This is my target. This is what the purpose of uh, would be. I want to understand and the reasons why I'm doing this marketing plan is so that I may be able to clearly strategize how to reach target A, target B, target C, um, whatever that is. And remember that you can have one product, you can have different segments um, for that one product that, or service that you're selling, right? So you can have that as a purpose of what your marketing plan is. Focus on the important things. Sometimes what happens is there are things that are really nice to have but they're not as a priority. So when you're listing down all your items, make sure that you prioritize certain items and focus on those because those are the important things that will help you pivot. Um, some of the things that I always uh, put into place is definitely brand awareness. Um, that's a really important part of uh, marketing because you're creating the visibility so that people can then inquire. And then after that will be um, your conversions, right? So from inquiry, then now you're gonna start talking and conversing with uh, the people that have um, they've asked for certain things. And then now there'll be finally people who actually purchase something from you. So what are the important things for you? Um, and, and put that into focus. Um, for a small business, we normally say that you can try with a one-year plan. In fact, you can even do three months, six months uh, to one year, all right? So you can break it down in that way. Um, so it helps you like to start understanding because a lot of times when you're starting up, there's a lot of data that you need to collect. So when you're starting to collect the data, um, this will probably help you out, right? Um, starting with the one, one, one month. For the bigger, bigger organizations, you can do a five-year plan as a, um, you know, what you're looking and what you're forecasting um, for the, for the, for the near future. So, so this will help you now to look at the bigger picture of it. Doesn't mean it's cast in stone. This is kind of a guideline for you on how you're gonna move forward, okay? So um, 
Second part of it is uh, position analysis, and Eunice will take you through that. So here's why position analysis is important. Let's assess what your situation is. Uh, we, I, we, I'll go back to last year, COVID really threw a wrench into everybody's business. I don't care who you are, even if you're Coca-Cola, whoever you are, even Boris, everybody was impacted by COVID. Everybody had to pivot in some ways and form to adjust to the pandemic and to adjust to doing business in a pandemic situation, right? So for example, restaurants, you're now opening, uh, closing early, bars, you're closing early, and meaning that you normally when your sales peak times uh, were after 9 p.m., that, that's when most of your customers were going home. Yes, yeah, some people circumvented the situation, but yeah, but that's, uh, that, that, that's, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's nature. People have to do what they have to do to survive. So position analysis says to you, this is where I currently are. This is the product I have. This is the price that I sell it at. This is the place that I'm selling it from. And this is the promotions that I do. And this is my target audience. Now, if you're the bars, the restaurants that, that are out there, you, you're stuck with the place. You can't go anywhere else. This is the place you're stuck with. The price pretty much stays the same, right? Um, the product, you might be able to, you know, add a, a few products to entice customers. Say, for example, that sausage moja that you be a moja, then you're, you're, you're enticing people to stay a little longer and drink too because you're feeding them something extra. Where normally you are just a buy, you always sold those beer, whatever. You're doing anything to keep the customer. And the promotion is that you're pushing, you, you know, you're putting flags out, you're putting, uh, you're putting posts out on Facebook, on WhatsApp, everywhere you can, billboards, anything to attract that customer. So if your position before was you had, you had, you're doing none of those or had, have never attempted any of those, maybe this year you're going to try and be strategic and try and do something different. We've talked about the pastel analysis and quarter five, and sometimes this sounds like we're going back to a master's class in, in marketing, but these things are important to, to, to understand. I won't go die, I'll deep dive into them. I'm gonna focus on this, the ones that make sense to you right this minute, which is that product, that price, that place, and that promotion. But please pay attention to, if you get a chance to Google what Porta 5 courses means and pastel analysis, as well as your sort analysis, which says you look at your strengths, you look at your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats and look at those and then try and take advantage of uh, where your opportunities are and where your weakness are, you try and buffer for them and a position right for them. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot negate all the weaknesses, but you can for some, right? So doing all this uh, work in positioning helps you uh, improve on your growth somewhat, some ways, right? So back to that marketing mix. Think of what your product is right now. Think about the pricing. Is it right for the current market right now? Think about the place you're selling it. Is it in the perfect place? It, it, does it work? If, for example, you're selling clothes, um, do you need to go online, right? Um, if, if you are in Utawala and the traffic in Utawala is slowed down, nobody is now coming into the shop. Maybe you need to go online. Um, if your services, do you have a website? Maybe you need to go to have something on, uh, to have a website online so people can find you there. After all, everybody's on this device now, right? So the, the, the people are looking up stuff, they're watching videos online. You better get online so that they can find you, right? So that's another thing to address, all right? Next thing is what we call the BCG matrix. And this one's a funny one. And I do remember sitting in a master's class <laughs> in marketing and wondering what the heck they're talking about, the cash cow, the dogs, the stars, and the, you know, 
you know, and the question mark. And the cash cow, if, as it says right there, it's a cash cow. That one brings you money no matter what you do. You lift, you, 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 you don't have to lift anything. You, you, there's minimal effort in getting, in selling this, right? You, you put it out there, whatever this product is itself. Um, but then there are those, you've know, got question marks, no matter what you do, they, they, they're not moving. So you ask yourself, should I even bother selling this? It's If you are a car dealer and you, you've you got Benzes and Range Rovers and Toyotas and Kias and whatnot, and you see that Kias aren't selling, their Kias are your question marks. And you're asking yourself, what can I do to move their Kias? Your Kias are your question marks. How do you move them to, to make them cash cows? Is, it, is there something with the pricing? Is there something with the, you know, what is it with the cares? How do I move them to stars or how do I move them to cash cows, right? So always look at your products and look at which ones are your cash cows, which are your dogs, which are your stars and which are your um, question marks and try and move them along. And sometimes you, there are some product lines you totally get rid of because you're never gonna be able to move uh, them to any of the, the, the slots we're talking about, the, meaning the cash cows. Yeah. So, so evaluate what you're offering. Yeah. And in fact, uh, some of the things that you can probably do in there as well is uh, bring in a, innovation. So when you bring yes. in innovation, that would probably help you to move something along on the, on the matrix itself. You know, yeah. so something that could be a dog, once you bring in an innovation, could be a cash cow. Um, yeah, because right now everything is going technology wise, everyone's going like off, um, like online. So it's something to think about um, when you're doing that. Right. OK, so um, once you've actually done all of this, you've got to understand your ideal target market. So here's the thing, whether you have done this before or have never done this before, this is a great place to start from, even when you're doing it this year, um, you know, for your marketing plan. You could think about, for example, when, you sp when you're starting your business and you're like, oh, you know what? These are the people I'd need to target. I want to target businesses who have uh, like uh, who need accounting um, softwares. Um, and then those are the ones I'm actually going to be focusing on. However, what you have an analysis wise from the previous year is that the most people who've actually bought your um, your items would have been. I don't know, like if, I'm just giving a, a random example of it here is like the Mama Boga. They really liked it because they were so intrigued by it, this and that. So imagining that you're, it's not something that you'd imagine that this is going to be a target market, but then introducing that just from the data and from the information that you've gotten from your existing customers that you've actually evaluated. So remember, make some time for that evaluation. But some of the things that you need to think about, obviously, is your basic demographics, your gender, age, education, occupation, behaviors and decisions. What are people's behaviors when people are coming to purchase something from you? Are they like, for example, I want to buy my pizza when I'm heading home in the evening or uh, because I'm so tired, I don't want to like, uh, you know, want to like I will not come in between the day. Uh, people are in the office at the moment, but as soon as you're finished with your office and you go to your favorite pizza place just as a, for a takeaway, and imagine there is no stock remaining, means that there's a problem. The pizza shop has not thought about the behaviors of people, you know? Mm. So think about that when you're actually thinking about your target market. What, is, what are driving their decisions? Uh, where, are, where are they driving those decisions at? What are their interests, their values? What are their goals? Some of these things could be like, like why am I thinking about this? But then you, if you get into their challenges and pain points, you'll easily be able to understand what are their needs um, uh, versus what you're able to like provide to them. Remember, think about it not as a sale, but think about it as something that you're helping another person with. If you come from there, it'll, very be, it'll be really easy for them to convert into seeing that, yes, this is something I really need, right? And then finally, what channel can you reach them on? Again, the yeah. ideal market, you'll need to understand like, um, if you're if you're targeting a professional, LinkedIn is great for that, right? You go into there, you, the conversations around that will be very different from the conversations that you'd probably have like on the Facebook page, right? Um, but where are those? Like the youngsters, are they on TikTok? How can I reach them on TikTok? You know, what are what are some of the places that I can actually reach my target market? 
that's important to, to learn and to understand. Yeah, the psychographics, um, all of that is really important. And we're gonna go through all of these things. Uh, we will provide uh, the slides for you at some point. Uh, but what are some of the things that you need to understand? Your, your competitors, who are they targeting, right? Uh, who is your perfect uh, customer? Um, you know, what are the habits? What are some of the habits of your potential customer? Uh, where do they go? What do they read? How, how do they make a decision? Um, what are the qualities uh, that your customer value the most? Is it accessibility? Is it affordability? Is it convenience? you know is it reliability are they willing to pay so much so long as they're you uh, uh, you know client or product or services reliable what are they all about you know so those are the things that you help to define your customers and understand the persona that they are right mm -hmm. so it's important to like sort of understand that um as part of your planning okay so Analyzing your competitor, this one this one's interesting because you've got direct competitors and then you've got indirect competitors. And sometimes you think your indirect competitors you don't need to care about. And you do because they take away your customer. Think about this. And, is, and this one is a really obvious one. The person who comes into a kiosk and buys a Coke uh, is, likely to change his mind and buy a bottle of water. So Co Coke sees the person buying a bottle of water from Kengit uh, or what other bottle of water providers as competition, right? And in, and in hence the reason why Coke went to the water distribution business and they have their distanding water. They want to keep that customer. If the customer wants water, they're buying that water from us. So when you're selling a, a product, uh, think about who's around you, what, they're, what they are, uh, are buying and why they're buying. And then think about what's gonna cause them to think of buying from that, that other person. Uh, that other business that is your competitor? What is it that you offer and that you don't offer that your competitor offers, right? So remember the trust and relationship and the, the stickiness that you have with the customer promises that you give to your customers will, uh, will cause you to have repeat business. Mm -hmm. However, if they feel that you're likely to be gone tomorrow. Meaning, for example, those who stopped uh, reaching out to their customers during 2020 uh, look like they've gone away. Uh, customers looked for that alternative. But if you kept up with your customers during 2020 and are still keeping up with your customers, the customers are then still coming back to you. Meaning you, you stayed sticky, meaning you still stayed in the face of your customer. Your customers didn't want to go to another uh, you know, provider. Um, I, I want uh, uh, Rima to share with you her Mama Boga strategy of making sure she keeps her as a customer. Go ahead, Rima. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, so there's a whole bunch of different Mama Bogas that come around uh, in this area, um, and I live in South Sea. And uh, this is one particular Mama Boga that I buy from all the time because she sends me a text message and says, hey, what would you want to get tomorrow? Um, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I need this, I need this, I needed this. And then she would make sure that every single day, she is there by a certain time. So she comes at about 9.30 every day. And she makes sure that she comes by that time. So the rest of the mama and bogas, they, they, they kind of rock in whenever, whenever they want. But by the time, like they come by about 11 or 12, I mean, I have already bought my stuff and I'm fine, you know. Yeah. Um, some of the strategies she uses as a mama and boga is, she, she called me to wish me a uh, happy Diwali. Uh, she said, happy new year to me. Just small little things like those. I mean, like for me, such a huge difference it makes apart from the fact that she's always on time. Um, you know, I don't mind paying a little bit extra from what is at, yeah. the, at the market um, just because I have the convenience of her coming here. And the fact that um, she is, she's always there asking me, what would you like to tomorrow? You know, um, so, it's, so, so you, 
so I, brilliant. So she's cut out all the competition, right? So she's made sure not only is she keeping up with you in technology, she's SMSing you uh, to find out what you need, right? So she knows what your needs are. So oh, if, if anything, you're not ever going to go to anybody else. You're going to her all the time, right? She's there very early, keeping up with your schedule not and not happen chancing that no. you be there at noon. Right, so yeah. that make sure she, she, you know, she's got you and sold you whatever, and it, meaning she's a, a customizing your need, her, her, your needs to you, so that when I mean, she comes your level, way, literally to the level when I say I'm going to leave early tomorrow, she uh -huh. said, "What time are you leaving?" And if I say mm -hmm. by nine o'clock, she'll be there by eight thirty. You there know? you go. So there you go. Fantastic. So, <laughs> so, so listening to your customer makes you, you know, gives you a leg up to your competition. Right, so absolutely brilliant strategy on Mama Mboga and the use of tech is phenomenal. Right, you you can do whatever you can to to get the edge up. All right, so setting goals, Rima. So we talk about setting goals all the time, and uh, I I. I, 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 the joke on this one is that we set goals and they're there. Do we ever execute on them completely? <laughs> Sometimes not, right? Oh, we're going to do um, sales of say 1 million uh, this year and maybe whatever, whatever goals we set. But the plan to execute on those goals is never created. And this is why we're having this call because you can have all the wonderful goals, but if you're not actually putting a plan in place to get this done, it's not gonna work, right? And the, if the goal is not realistic, um, then it, you're, you're going to be frustrated and go, well, I said a million, but if I'm selling, if I'm a mamamboga um, and I'm selling cabbage and garlic and this and that and that, it, a million is unrealistic maybe a million a year maybe but not a million a month right so let's let's get it so let's she could say i'm going to try and sell 10k a, a, a 10k a month or 10k a week i, I don't know depending on how she, her market is so depending on what your products and services are set your goals realistically what did you sell last year up that number by 10 20 30 percent something realistically okay we did um we did 2 million last year. Let's try and do 4 million this year. We let's double, let's wear in sales. Let's double that, right? And then how do we achieve that? We sold to 40 customers last year. Let's try and see if we can sell to uh, 60 customers this year, all right? And so that achievable, how did we do it? We, we had webinars, we had, um, we did events. We uh, we went out to customer. We went we met customers. We made phone calls. We did email campaigns. We did Facebook com campaigns. So we those now we are itemizing all the activities we're going to do. So this is the strategic and these uh, um, these uh, tactical. So now we identify all the activities. So this all these activities map out straight to our goals, so that when we count, we we do the count of what's working and what's not we and that leading to our goals it's there we can look and see what worked and what didn't work being very specific is going to be important because if you give some arbitrary thing, number out there you're not going to be able to achieve it and you're not going to be able to give to uh we're we not going to be able to count for roi you're not going to be able to tell what your roi was and depending on your situation and your goals it's going to be difficult if you set a number that is ridiculous and that has no place for example if you're selling matush and you're going to want to be a you're, you're going for i want to be want to make 10 million and your inventory is nowhere near that to make get you to the 10 million and your capital that you're going to invest in uh, that you, it's gonna that you're going to buy your inventory is nowhere that 
right? Maybe you're gonna get capital injection at some point, but you don't know where that's gonna come from. So you'd rather have, you'd rather set a goal that you know you can reach, but surpass that goal because along the way you make some milestone, you get capital injection that you blow that goal beyond its goal. Okay, so think about those numbers, all right, and be realistic about them. Yeah. And uh, part of the goals, I mean, one of the things that people say is like, oh, I want to, you know, make sure that I get 10,000 people following me or 20,000 people following me on like uh, the social media and stuff. It really doesn't matter if you've got so many people, but if they're not mm -hmm. going to be the right people, the relevant followers, yep. your target market, then yep. your return on investment on that will will definitely be gone, you know. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, right, so you've done all of that and now comes the money, right? You've got to put a budget to everything, yes. right? Even oh, if it's yeah. zero budget. So zero yes. budget. <laughs> so even if it's zero budget and a lot of people are working with zero budget. That a lot. Means a lot. That just basically mm. means that you're going to put in time to do organic marketing, right? So mm -hmm. time is money um, as well. So when you're setting a budget, even if you say zero budget, um, put that amount on each place. How much time and effort are you gonna put into each of the yeah. facets of um, your plan, right? Um, am I gonna do more activities all around like a webinar like this, or am I gonna put, um, go onto Twitter and have conversations that are very relevant to what you're selling as a product or service? It's going to take time and effort, but like I said, zero budget also works so long as it's like um, like put into place and you're, you're thinking about it in that way as well. Um, otherwise, if you're thinking about where is that money going to come from, that's really important as well. Are you injecting it as a capital injection or are you, are you borrowing from somebody uh, for a certain promotion? Um, did a promotion work last time or a campaign work last time uh, where you want to like now start using the same thing because that return on investment was great. So you know that when you're asking for that money, you're going to get that money back again as well. Um, is it from already existing customers? So are you going to get that money from the existing customers as well? But in when you're setting the budgets, it's really important to think about that in terms of how you're going to play around the entire year. Which is why when we're saying that when you do your one year plan, break it down into monthly, quarterly, um, half yearly, and you start like analyzing what happened last quarter. Okay, can we do it better? Um, can what happened last last uh, in, in the last six months? Um, how can we change and tweak things around as well? Right. So the costs help you put the plans into action as well. Right. So setting budgets is really important, <laughs> even if it's a zero budget, like I mentioned, right? So mm -hmm. that's that's okay. That's not a that's not an issue. And once you've put all of those items together, like we mentioned to you, you put them all together and you implement. You actually create, uh, like you you now analyze. Okay, so how you monitor? You've got to monitor your campaigns. You've got to monitor how your marketing is going along. Um, one of the ways of monitoring would be. Um, making sure that you get feedback from your customers. Um, everything is going okay. Is everything fine? Um, you know, like, and then someone will be like, no, but you know, the price uh, this, or, oh, you know, um, I didn't get that. But then this is kind of the thing when you're doing in terms of monitoring, one, from your customers, two, from the, the campaigns that you're running. So whether if, what I love about online campaigns is that you're able to get the data right it's mm -hmm. very different from when you're doing something that's online uh that's like a billboard or um so that's offline so that's a billboard or something like that but the performance and implementation is really important um in this aspect of your plan you have a beautiful plan you've got to put it into play right yep okay um so the overall planning process and i'm trying to get to that um there you uh, go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, would be just exactly what I mentioned. So you sign off your plan, you monitor it, like I mentioned to you, you measure and make sure that you get your data for everything. With that data, now you start putting it into place and saying, analyzing and seeing, okay, you know what, this didn't work, this didn't, this didn't work. Um, 
what as marketers we love doing is something called a b testing so you send it out to the same kind of target market uh, with a few tweaks here and there on both the campaigns and you get now the data that which one worked better because at the end of the day even like whether it's a video or an artwork or, a, or an image that you're sending out it has to appeal to your target market right so you use that data put it into place make your corrections if you'd like and then now um, sign off again so you make your changes you keep changing things around and if it even if it's working perfectly that's fine then you just keep signing off on it again um, and, and making probably making it better you always can make it better you always can grow right so um, that's the idea in terms of overall implementation of your of your processes in the plan right you've got to assess maybe sometimes what happens is you needed help where you weren't able to do it on your own um, and this guideline will help you to then put everything into place in terms of like okay you know what um, I had I didn't have anyone else doing it on my own versus this this quarter I'm gonna have someone helping me out specifically on a certain items because um, that's what I can afford and see if that makes a difference for you and is that growing your business right so yeah, yeah. take corrective action. It, it also helps in the troubleshooting of where you went wrong because if, if you've broken down the processes like this oh we went wrong somewhere in the measurements our numbers weren't right we didn't pick we we we, we weren't collecting the data appropriately uh or you know we we need more we need if you've got a, a service team and a a, a small company you find out oh we desperately need to hire somebody to really help us on our marketing so that now you can actually say i can hire somebody now if you're outside hustle and you're doing all this work yourself then then you help yourself with saying okay let me create a spreadsheet where i can now put all these numbers here and here and here and make your life easier so it helps you break down all these little tasks because if you don't have this in a process like this, you won't know what to pick, what to track, what to 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 uh, to look back at and say, okay, yeah, we were, went wrong. So, so that if we're 2022, you go back and we're we're doing this uh, plan, you're, we're doing this webinar again in 2022. You can say, hey, Eunice and Rima, guess what? This is what well, what we found out from 2021. We can then say, hey, see now you know where your challenges are. Improve on this and this and that, right? Yeah. All right. So a good marketing plan includes all of these elements. Um, so it's simple description, right? And and let me say this before even I dive into this. I'd like for you, if you're a small business, a side hustle, to make it a one minimum one two pager, right? Don't go into an essay. Don't write a thesis out of this because then you're not going to use it. For sure, the minute it becomes more than two pages, you're not gonna use it. So keep it to a minimum. So brief description of your business and your situational analysis, defining your customer, like a small paragraph of who your customer is, and then the strategy of what, how you're going to do, your, go about your marketing growth, and then focus on your sales and, uh, and, then de and demand measure. And you know that demand measure by if you, you sell clothes and you sell 10, 10 dresses, 10 pants, 10 this a, a, a week or a month, you know what your demand is usually like. So if you're a, a shopkeeper and you or, or honestly sell so much uh, uh, stock a, a, a week, a month, you know what your demand is. And so you can easily focus. For example, if you sell so many loaves of bread a day and you say 100 loaves of bread a day, when you stock, you only buy a hundred. But if you start to see that by by nine a.m. you're running out of bread, then you want to stock hundred and ten. So that's focusing your demand, all right? And then outline your your marketing budget, whether it's zero, twenty, whatever it is. You know that month, if the marketing budget is zero, you're working with zero, then that is what it is, and allocate that zero budget and do what you can with zero. The next month, if it's something more. Then you're using that back, uh, that amount. Integrate your marketing communication. This is where we go wrong. Is that if, if we've got the plan, and we've got, it's a very nice plan, but we don't do anything with it, right? 
you have to do something. So if, you're, if you've created a poster about your nice outfits that you're selling, they should be on WhatsApp with all your friends, tell them to share it out. It, they should be on Facebook, it, wherever you can to get word out, wherever you can to get your word out that doesn't cost you money. And if you've got budget that you can advertise, advertise on YouTube, advertise on Facebook, advertise where you can, Ad, advertise on True Color where people are on their phones, do whatever you can to get the word out. You're spending a thousand bob here, 500 bob here, do whatever you can, right? And then identify your sales channel, right? If your local beauty, beauty shop that you go to get your nails done for the ladies, they can put a poster of your outfits that you sell, do it. That's a sales channel. So identify places that can help you sell your stuff or help you or promote your service. It's partnering, that's a, another avenue of, of channels uh, with a, 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 another business can help move your sales. Those are partner channels, that's what we call them then partner with people. And partnership is going to be the new sales channels. So think about that and what, track all the activities. And as again, evaluate your progress. And again, rinse and repeat, keep doing this and make sure you're collecting data each and every day so that you're not waiting until the end of month to try and collect data. And sometimes you've forgotten what the day last week's data was and you've forgotten what, every day just sit 10 minutes 15 minutes say okay what did we do for sales today what did we do just put that down in your spreadsheet and if you have a tool put put we put all that data so that it, life is easier on you so i want to share with you the buying funnels and the sales funnels and the buying funnels is just to help you understand when your prospect is a prospect and when your client is a client and or a buyer and so that you know when to invest in in that in that potential client and when not to or when to delay investment right so a prospect is somebody who comes because they've seen an advertisement or some a friend has told you has told them about you about your business, about your products and services. So they come to check you out. And at that point, they don't know anything about your business. They don't trust your business yet. They're totally unaware about it. They've, they've not had an experience. At that time, they're a prospect. So they need to be converted. So you're introducing yourself, your business to them. And this is where you need to create that relationship, that connection. So they come to you, they, they come to you either with a phone call and visit on the website, they've visited your Facebook page and what's, what do they find? If the Facebook page and they, they don't have an interaction, they don't say anything, they like it, let them get a message, say hello, welcome to our Facebook page, thank you for liking it, right? Um, if they come to your website, let there be a chatbot saying, thank you for visiting, do you have any questions and that all that good stuff. So that's an interaction. The more they visit, the more likelihood that they are a potential customer that they, they are interested. And it's up to you now to start uh, to, to try and connect them to buying to the buying process. And that's how you put them through the funnel. Now, if somebody comes to you and says, um, well, we're interested in, the, in your services. That is your initial contact. They either came to you via email and said, uh, can you give us a quote on your products or services? And that's your initial contact. The next thing you're doing is qualifying them. Can they actually buy? Because not everybody that comes to your inbox is actually going to be able to buy. Are they the person who are going to make the buying decision, right? And so, you, so now you have to qualify. Yes, 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 we can help you. And you're quickly helping them to, to, to you, you're sending them the quote, you're sending them all that good stuff. First, before you do all that, find out who they are, who, you know, and before you give out all those details and why they want the product. You, you, may, you, you may think this is counterintuitive, but if I'm the receptionist at a the, at the big hotel and I've sent, I've sent send me a quote on, uh, the, uh, on, on bed sheets because you sell bed sheets and, and you're like, yes, 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 and you sent all the quotes, the receptionist, you know for sure is not the one buying the bed sheets, right? Somebody in housekeeping or the manager of housekeeping is the one who's going to buy. You probably want to ask the receptionist, please tell me why you're looking for bed sheets. And she'll probably tell you, oh, the housekeeping management, the manager said to, for me to find quotes of people who, who, who sell bed sheets. 
and say you then you probably want to ask that person to connect you with the house the manager of housekeeping that's the person you want to engage find out what quantity they want then go through the whole presentation process evaluation negotiate and then you close the deal so if you're a small hustler and you're selling boga like the mama boga is selling to rima you see how she negotiates her sales with rima she contacts her what do you want to do and what's the quantity what time are you going to be there that's the whole buying funnel all over again and again so she make sure i'm going to be there on the time she needs me i'm going to have what she needs so she's qualifying the buying process again and again and again and so that she makes sure she's able to close the deal so just keep remembering that process again so that you're not you don't feel like you're wasting your time with people who aren't going to buy and people who aren't ready to buy they may buy but they're not ready to buy right here right now for example corporates uh, take forever to buy they your banks your hospitals they take a long time to buy you when women are buying from a mom that she's buying every day every other day every week kind of thing corporates if they're buying big deals or it services whatever services they're buying once and it takes 3 months 2 months or 6 months to 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 close that deal so the process is going to take longer so take take time take time to understand your customer before jumping in and getting exhausted with a deal that's not going to work and or a deal that you should have you could have closed but because you didn't understand who's the buyer you you lost thank you great i mean like part of the the ch sales channel again and and the reasons why you need to understand this when you're doing your marketing is what part of the channel are you at right are you the producer at, exactly um, mm -hmm. Are you the agent in between person who's selling to a whole wholesale distributor? Are you the one who's selling to the retailer, or are you the one who's producing and directly selling to the consumer? Right. So there are all these different kinds of channels that are there, um, and you can understand and learn these processes as well. Right. Um, you could be uh, as you could be the producer and wondering whether you want to directly sell to your consumer, go through a wholesaler, go through an agent. You know, a lot of people like, for example, my Samsung phone. Um, Samsung didn't directly sell it to me. What they did is whether the retail outlet was their own or was it actually a franchise, all right? Or was it a shop that just sells a lot of phones and then Samsung one was one of them, right? And then who um, like sort of uh, gave these items or like um, distributed these items to the retailer themselves. So think about it in that way in which part of the process you're in, in terms of the channel, right? Um, one of the other things that you want to probably look at as well is your marketing channels, right? So you've got your online and offline channels. Um, probably not going to go through a lot of those, but you know that you've got your social media, emails, paid searches, um, offline promotions like your expos, you've got your billboards, you've got your um, different branding that's happening outside your retail shops, for example, a lot of public relations. But a lot of online uh, marketing wise, you know, because of everyone, a lot of people are actually going through that because that's where people are. Yeah, everyone's got a mobile phone, right? So you want to reach these people where they are. Um, so your websites and apps um, or emails and chatbots. Chatbots are amazing. Um, reasons being that you get to understand what your frequently asked questions are. And um, our recommendation for that is if they if it's a, a frequently asked question, make sure it's part of your content on your website or your app and don't keep it as frequently asked questions, right? So that you're already answering those things. Then chatbots help with that because then they connect with all the questions that people have. So it's um, so think about it that way in terms of what are the different marketing channels that are there, right? Um, Right, I think we're almost to the end of our presentation. Yep, so, so evaluating all the hard work you've done, right? So reason why we do this is just to figure out our progress and figure out our return on investment. And it's so that we can rinse and repeat, do it again and grow our business really that's the essence of it all um and that way we've got and, and the only way we know this is working is we've got money in the bank and we're not complaining 
and we're happy, we're smiling. And it, it, you know, when we, you go have a cup of coffee with your friends and, uh, and, and, and colleagues, you're not stressing. Uh, you're actually looking forward to go to work. So that, that is, makes it, a, it makes it better. It makes, it makes your day go better. You're, when you report to work every day, you're, you're actually feeling empowered. So you've reached your goals, your marketing campaigns are successful, maybe not all of them, but some of them, but you're now actually feeling empowered to make the ones that are not that successful, you're able to try and figure out how to make them successful, right? You're able to determine how to get those, uh, you know, how to get figure out other ways to gain another return on investment. You're able to figure out how to innovate and improve if you're you know you're a marketer in a big company now you're being creative and you're you're, you're bringing new ways of uh you know marketing to the company because now you you've got this so the end goal is you've got growth and and if you are measuring and you're doing the, the whole cycle measuring uh, you know monitoring and all that good stuff you are you're doing all the right things so the goal of this thing is to get you growing. The goal of this thing is to get you making some money. The goal of this thing is to have you month of a month, uh, say, no, let's say day of a day, week of a week, month of a month, going upwards. And it's not always going to be an, an uptick. There'll be, be some drops in certain months. So expect those, but there'll be you know, an uptick every every so often if you if you're doing all the right things and if not just feel free to call us to to Rima and I to help diagnose where you're potentially going wrong and to help you this again we said always seek a professional when things are not going right that's why they're there so don't waste so you're not spending so much time and money and it, it, flashing it down the toilet when you could have uh, gotten a professional to assist you and kept you on the right track all right. Actually, so before we go into um, you know the, the the last part, which is now we're going to show show you the resources that we're we're going to share with you before we we answer the questions. And Diallo, we've seen your question. I'm just yeah. going to run a quick one. Have you ever run a marketing campaign before? I just want to know um, if this is something that you've done before, or is it something that um, like you'd really want to try and do somewhere in the future? um hopefully it's not what is that <laughs> um yeah i just want to know like you know whether it's online or offline it could be an or, or like offline campaign that you ran where you were at an expo or um you know you're you're uh, doing some flyers on the street whatever it is you know have you run a yeah. campaign before okay great fantastic awesome. great thanks very much for that okay. all right all right this this that 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 is very helpful to know because what Rima is going to share next is going to help those who say no go yeah. ahead Rima all right great so what we're going to do is we're sharing with you um two resources for free and we'll email these to you um so if in case you didn't uh register through our event right um and a friend just gave you the link feel free to just um, write in an email to a, a, or a message to uh, like even if it's a direct message to us and we'll make sure that you get an email with the free resource as well so there's two resources i've got over here for you we've got here for you one is a marketing plan template now in the marketing plan template uh what i've done is from january all the way to december each week um we've broken it down into communications promotions um online strategies um, any, 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 any things that you want to like uh, buy, like promotional items, things of that sort. So all of them are actually segregated. And at the end of it, um, what you can do is you can write and we've, we've, we've suggested some things like, for example, February is coming up. So Valentine's. So anyone who is like in gift items or something like that, that's one of the promotions that you want to run is during or just before Valentine's period. You don't want to do it at, on Valentine's Day itself. You want to do it um, leading to Valentine's Day, right? So we've put some suggestions in there on like what campaigns you can run. It's um, uh, it's actually editable, so you can keep editing it. But then there's a place, there's a column. The blue column is always for pricing, and at the end of the pricing or the budget you've set, 
Um, so you'll get your budgets right at the end of each of the segments as well. So whether it's communication um, or promotions or um, giveaways. And then finally you will have, and it's all done for you. And then you've got the final budget. So you'll be able to see like, okay, so this is what I have to work with or you need to tweak things around. So um, that's that. And then the second part is the marketing campaign steps to follow. So that's the question I was asking you earlier is um, sometimes you overwhelm with where do I start when I want to start a campaign, right? So whether you're working for yourself or working for an organization, what we've done is we've put a, some few points together for you um, that could help you to guide you through your campaigns, uh, preparation for the campaign, during the campaign, and after the campaign is over, what you can do. Again, nothing is cast in stone. You can tweak things around to help you to use utilize it in the way you'd like it to be done but we just give you some guidelines on this as well so those are the two free resources that we're giving to you um, to start your 2021 um, with a bang <laughs> so i'm really super excited about that and um, on that note i just want to thank everyone who came in today uh, for this uh, presentation i'm really really excited about this um, Eunice, uh, while we're going through that, I know that we're, we're talking about, we've got a coffee chat happening. Uh, before we go, we've got a coffee chat happening um, early next month. Yeah, sorry, 11th of uh, February, we've got a coffee chat where any questions you, get, you guys have, we have a Q&A right now. So please feel right. free and stay over for the Q&A. But if any questions boil over and you'd like us to answer them, we're, we're doing a coffee chat. It's a virtual coffee chat on the 11th of February. So please feel free to like uh, note that down and uh, um, and register for it. Um, and you can also always send us questions early so we can prepare those and then answer for you or even respond to you even before that. But please feel free to do that. And on that note, um, Q and A has started. And Eunice, do you want to take Diallo's question? Yes. And Diallo's question was, let me get back there and see the questions. In your experience, have you navigated this uh, commercial uh, relationship that exists between the finance department and the marketing department and how, and how you demonstrate return on marketing investment? Um, yes. Listen, it, it, Finance wants to know where the money is going and how they're getting the money back. And honestly, marketing always seemed to be a cost, always taken, a, a taken on as a cost center. And we should always present it as um, a profit center, right? We are the ones bringing in the money. If we don't market, there's no money coming in. Please tell them that. If you don't do any marketing, there'll be no sales and there'll be no marketing. I mean, there'll be, there'll be no revenue in the bank. So tell them that. So the one thing to say is, if you do not allocate as budget to get uh, marketing messages and collateral ready to get our sales folks ready to go out to the market to get us deals that then close, that then get, get as revenue, then you all are out of a job those sales don't find their way into the company by themselves. Am I right or wrong, Rima? Absolutely, you know, they don't, um, you know, they, they definitely have to allocate some budget for you. And I know the, the issue a lot of times in corporates is that amount of money that goes to you, right? So when yeah. a thing like COVID happens, the first thing you do is slash your marketing. Marketing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> However, um, Here's the thing, finance loves data. So the yeah, exactly, heart, that's what I was gonna add. The way, yes. the way to their heart is through is. data. <laughs> so when you're doing your um, analysis, you can show them, look, this is how much we spend. Um, this is the return on investment in terms of brand yes. awareness. These are the numbers yes. that we got. And these yes. are the inquiries. And these are the, yes. these are the monies that we like, this is the purchases that we got after that, right? So you yes. can see that this is the number of leaps and fro frogs that we've done from the yeah. money, from the 10 bob you gave us, we gave us a thousand bob, right? So yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that. all that data, all the, all the measurements we were talking about, all, the, all this ROI stuff we were talking about, that's what you need to inundate them with. So uh, when you do the presentations to them, you're giving them, all right, you allocated us your 10 bob. We brought back 
a thousand times fold back to you. This is how we did it. This is how it was spent and this is how we did it. And that way they are then happy to see the ROI and will not push back. Um, if you provide that, and in fact, it's because it, that we get the hit because we don't provide the data. And if we do, then folks are happy to see. For example, we had, Rima and I had a customer and the customer was like, we want, we want numbers, we want leads. And we inundated them with leads. And they were like, uh, our sales people can't reach them all at once. And we're like, but that's what you asked for. So they're happy they got the leads, but uh, they didn't have enough salespeople to get them to, you know, they had sales folks, but you've got two salespeople and you've got 500 leads to go after. That's overwhelming. But but that's a good problem to have. But that's what a customer needs to have. You asked for leads, this is where your leads. So you give us a budget, here's the, the results of that. So just show them the data, show them the data as much as you can. Overwhelm them with it too. Yeah, I hope that helped Diallo. Um, actually on that note, uh, you know, what I wanted to say is that for, for sure, I think next, next, next month, we'll do something on sales strategy that will yes. link marketing and sales together and yeah. how to like do the loop with marketing, sales and customer service um, yes. and how the sales strategy would work around that um, yeah. because you can't work in silos. You've got to work together as a team, you know? Um, so I think uh, you, keep your pe eyes peeled out for that. Uh, you know, we'll work on something for you on that um, to help you help you guys over the year, over this year, yeah. Great. If you'd like, you could unmute yourself with, and ask a question if there's any. I don't see any other question in the chat. Um, it, or did I miss something? No, I haven't seen any thank other you questions. For the, thank you guys for the comments. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you. your, your, yeah, they're really, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone else who has a question right now, um, you can unmute yourself and just ask it. Even if it's specific to your industry, we are happy to take it. Yeah. Or it's specific to your hustle or your business, we are happy to take it. Great. I think uh, I think we I think all of this was quite a lot as well. Yeah. <laughs> quite a yeah. lot to actually take in. Uh, but feel free to reach out. I mean, we're happy to do um, a 30 minute uh, uh, free consultation for any one of you guys, you know, uh, when we're sending out the email, um, Tanina, I'll suggest a uh, request if you can just also send out, like if anyone wants to um, book a, a 30 minutes, uh, uh, you know, free consultation, we're happy to do that for you as well. Okay. Yes. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, if there's no other question, we are so grateful as well. Thank you so much for Thank giving you. us your time um, you. to come and, and join us for this. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys, and have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. This is an example of partnerships that work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anya. Thank you, Patrick.